the first few weeks of a breakup. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Hello, you beautiful people. How are you? Good New Year's. Hope you had a good Christmas. I did. Took some time off. Needed it. Um, but I'm back now with a vengeance. Well, I say a vengeance. Just another upload, really. Welcome to the YouTube channel we're creating here, the community, uh, talking about breakups, how we deal with breakups. Uh, I just want to say, don't forget, if you do want a one-to-one -one with me, all the links in the description below. Digital downloads now in the, uh, have a look in the description. Today, we are talking about the first few weeks of a breakup. Um, emotional times. How do we deal with these emotional times? I know when I went through my first few weeks of uh, a major breakup, it was devastating. Uh, anxious behavior, really wanting to reach out and make communication, but knew it was the wrong thing to do. Fighting against yourself is one of the major things here. How our brain and emotions are telling us, look, listen, you can fix this. All you've got to do is get in front of your ex and, um, you know, just talk to her. And as soon as you talk to her, she's going to want you back or he's going to want you back. All you've got to do is get in front of them. That's what our brain tells us. Of course, it's not the right thing to do. We need to pull away in most circumstances, go straight into no contact. And don't reach out to them at all. That's what we need to do. But of course, we're fighting our emotions and our feelings half the time. So it is very hard. There is some good news because when we go through the first few weeks of a breakup, the good news is that if we do the right thing, there is a very big chance that our ex will reach out to us. So what do we expect to feel in the first few weeks of a breakup? Well, one major one, devastation. You know, where did that come from half the time? Our exes are always processing it before they vocalize this big decision. Of course, they're used to now the idea because they have gone to the friends and family and vocalized it there and, of course, got the support. So then they come home and they feel it's OK now to tell us it's over. So that's devastating because it hits us straight away with them. As I said, they've processed it already. They've got used to the idea before they've even packed their stuff up. Uh, and of course, we're left shell-shocked. What the fuck just happened? Um, confusion, really. Confusion as well. Big major one. Why do we get so confused? Well, half the time your ex is confused anyway. And uh, believe it or not, that's good that they're confused. Give them space. Give them time to really figure out what they want. We're confused because we're like, what have I done? What have I done? Now, listen, I'm, I, I'm not a gambler. I'm not a drug taker. You know, I don't drink. I'm not out of control. I'm not violent. What have I done? I haven't cheated. And that's confusing because we go back in our mind and we think, well, what have I done? What, what major things have I done to push our ex is away. But going back, the thing is, sometimes our ex will actually tell us what we've done. And sometimes they will discuss with us months prior before the breakup. Uh, but we take it for granted. That's what we do. We take it for granted because the routine's there, the foundation's there. We're thinking, ah, this is me now forever. We don't even consider it. We just go along with life until bang, they've had enough. They finished with us. Now we're like, Hang on, right? I can change. That thing that you've been going on uh, at me for months for, I can change it now. All of a sudden, I can change it now. But by then, it's too late. We're anxious now. We are anxious. Why are we anxious? Because in our heads, we're thinking, I'm never going to get back with her again. I'm never going to see him again. This is it. It's over forever. We're getting anxious about that. Why? Because it's the unknown. Of course, we're going to get anxious of the unknown. It's scary. What our brains tell us is we're going to be lonely forever. We're never going to get a person like that ever again. That was my one shot and I blew it. 
and I hate myself for it. And of course, our anxious behaviour makes us try and convince our ex. We're reaching out now. We're begging and pleading. We're like, oh my God, bend the knees. Please don't leave. Because we're thinking, if you go, that's it. My life is ruined. I can't breathe without you, eat without you, sleep without you. I can't do nothing without you. So we hold on to that. Our anxious behaviour takes over. These are our emotions that we go through in the first few weeks of a breakup. Intense. The first three days. Oh my God, it's devastating. The first few weeks, devastating still. There is no change really. All we're doing is getting used to something. Our life is now over. But if we can just get our ex back, we can all go back to normal. We can have a cup of tea, we can smoke a fag, and we can just chill out now because the problem is fixed. But when our ex doesn't want to come back to us or communicate, we hate it because we want what we can't have. And of course, everything inside us will beg, plead, cry, write letters, show up at their works, anything. We almost want to guilt them into something. And when that don't work, sometimes people get angry. It's wrong, isn't it? They get angry with it. And then when that doesn't work, some people get suicidal. They want pity. They don't really want to kill themselves. I know it's a delicate subject, but we have to talk about it. A lot of it is pity. Feel sorry for me. Come back and feel sorry for me. Look, I'm going to end my life. If you don't come back to me, these are all unattractive behaviors, guys. But I get it. Our emotions are all over the place. Now, there is a bunch of people, a handful of people that go down this road, this route, and don't change, don't fix anything within themselves. All they're doing is throwing out vibes. Hey, look at me. Um, I've got no control of myself whatsoever. You don't want to come back to me. So I'm going to make it my mission to piss everyone off around me and to destroy your life. Now, I want to pause there because. If you're doing that, you need to stop right now because this is unacceptable behavior. And I can promise you one thing, you will never get your ex back by doing it. There is nothing more unattractive, guys, than someone who is out of control. Someone who comes across as a problem. Someone who comes across scary. You will never attract your ex, or anyone else really, for that matter, behaving like that. I'm not saying everyone reacts like this, but hey, I'm a breakup coach. These things happen. These are part of emotions. And it all depends on what kind of a person you are. We have to take that in consideration. So when all these emotions are swirling round us in the first few weeks of a breakup, what can we do? Guess what? You're doing it right now. You're listening to videos. You're listening to coaches who are guiding you through the right and wrong things to do. Now, we all know there is some good coaches out there. There is some bad coaches out there. Stay away from coaches that promise you they can get your ex back. If you listen to a coach and they say to you, I promise I can get your ex back, you know they're not a good coach. You're listening to videos. Coaches are now taming you down and calming you down, hopefully, and breaking it down and telling you the right things to do when we are emotional. Now, these videos are a very, very crucial, in my opinion. They help calm your anxiety down. And there is always hope, guys, always hope. For instance, I'll break it down so um, simple for you. Who would you rather be with? Someone who has lost total control and causing trouble in your life and problems or someone that you haven't heard from for a while? Because you haven't heard from them for a while, 
your interest levels grow because you want to know what is going on. That's attractive. Someone who is in your face all the time and causing trouble and contacting you, not necessarily causing trouble, just constantly contacting you, asking you things, trying to get conversations going, really digging deep to try and get this conversation going, even though your ex is just giving you full stops at the other end, you're trying to bring up this conversation and it's so transparent, you're getting the roll eyes moment, that's what they're doing, they're looking at the screen thinking, I don't want to upset this person, they're just rolling their eyes and we don't want that. But we understand that you're hurt, you're grieving, you've been dumped, you've been left in the gutter, you feel worthless, we understand all this. But just giving them space and time can benefit both parties here. Remember, I don't judge. I try and guide people through the right moves to make and the wrong moves to make. The first few weeks of a breakup is horrendous. And it does start to fade. Once we take control of ourselves, once we put a plan into place, once we really know the right moves to make in a breakup and don't throw our emotions out on our ex, we kind of contain them and deal with them ourselves. Once we know all this stuff, half the time, our exes reach back out to us. But as I said, the first few weeks, months of a breakup is devastating. But guess what? You don't have to be alone through this. Watch the videos. Contact me. Book up a coaching call with me. We'll have a chat. We'll work things out. It really isn't the end of the world, guys. It's about taking control and knowing the steps to take and having the support there can get you through these weeks, these months. Just remember that. Uh, you're all beautiful people. I flame and love you. I'll see you later.